Hi guys, Peter Finch here and welcome down to the next video in the Swing Quest series. Now the Swing Quest series guys is where I take lessons that I've had down in the academy, talk about the improvements which have been made and then translate them into a video so hopefully you can improve as well. Now over the last few weeks I have not been coaching, I've been playing, I've been filming and Carly has been away so I've been in charge of the dog. So the only person I've been coaching is myself and that will change again from next week but today we're going to be talking about putting putting drills and some of the best ones that you can use now i've also done these drills in a way where they can be combined into an actual practice session which normally takes about an hour to complete depending on your current skill level and this is all based around how you can practice and then how you can learn to cope with a little bit of pressure and from different situations as well. If you are new to the channel guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button, make sure you hit that like button and comment below. Also the Swing Quest series, there is a book coming out at the end of August, beginning of September. So please keep your eyes peeled for that. Now the first place to start is the beginning of the practice session. Now at the beginning of my practice session, I always start with block practice just to get myself a little bit more in tune with what I want to do technically within my stroke. Now you can see here within my practice session and this first drill that I'm going to be talking about, I am using a training aid, specifically a swash playing board. Now these boards don't exist anymore in this current form, but there are plenty out there. This board, this is old now. I actually think this is your Rick's. Rick, if you're watching, I've got your Yes playing board. And basically what this is doing, it is allowing me to get a little bit of a better arc going back and through, but I'm also working on my tempo. So as part of my practice technique, I'm going faster on my backstroke and slower on the way through. That's what it feels like. I'm not doing that properly, but it's just about matching my tempo up. Also with my posture, I'm trying to change that as well. So getting all these things together within this little practice drill just helps me with my stroke. Also, I've added in a little bit of a pressure element, so I need to be holding 20 putts perfectly with this drill. Now what I mean by that is I need to hold five putts out of five. If I only hold four and then miss the last one, I need to start that series again. So four lots of five perfect puts using the playing board. Now next drill we're gonna be talking about is targeting. Now this could take quite a long time to complete actually, but it's all about reading the put and visualizing the put a little bit better. So you can see here what I've done is I've picked a put of about 30 feet and I've got the break going here. You can see it's about four cups on the outside of the hole. I've also got a midpoint that I want my ball to be rolling over when it's on the way to the eventual target, which is the hole. Now the whole point of this is I'm aiming at that target outside the hole and then I'm visualizing how it's going to be curving back the point that it will start to break and intersect on its way to the cup. And using this method, it basically forces me to have a perfect put. Yeah, obviously the perfect put lands at the bottom of the hole, but this is all about perfecting my reading, my pace control, my targeting. It's a great drill to use. And all I'm looking for here is I'm just looking for one perfect put before I move on. If I wanted to expand the practice session a little bit more, I could move it on to right to left puts and all sorts but I'm just looking for that one perfect put, which starts out on the line that I want, rolls over that intermediate target, and then finishes in the hole. Now with this as well, if he does miss, I'm looking to miss it just after the hole, so I'm looking for a very much dead weight put, only about six inches after. Now the next drill that I move on to, after holding that perfect put, is this super simple pace control drill. This is a cracker, so I've gone to a distance which I'm just struggling with, about 20 feet, getting the pace absolutely bang on, and I've arrayed a little semicircle of tees just behind the hole, and to the left and the right. And I've got three puts here, and all I want to do is get three puts within that zone or within the hole. If I don't manage to get one of the three puts within that zone of the hole, I just start again. The only danger that I found with this is if I have a power lip out, whoo, you see my face here, if that had missed, I would not have been happy. Now this is a really tough drill, this next one for me. This is called a gate drill. So I've got my target out there at about 15 foot. I've also placed the tee pegs, you can't quite see it from the camera, around the back of the hole as well to work on my pace. So what I'm aiming to do here is get my putter rocking back and through perfectly so it doesn't hit either of the tees on the heel or the toe of the putter. And then I want the ball to be starting on that perfect target line through this gate. And what this forces me to do is not steer the putt because when I try and steer it through that first gate, I almost always hit it and then don't get control of the pace, which is why that T pegs around the back of the hole again. So I'm just looking to free up my stroke to try and get it started online and then to try and get it finishing within that target zone. It's exactly the same. It's three putts which are in the hole or just behind. And you can do this on left to right, right to left putts, 
whichever distance you're struggling with. For me, getting the put started online is something I need to work on a lot more, but this is a great way to start. Now, the last drill that we're gonna be looking at and the way to round off a practice session is with a bit of pressure. Now, what I've done here is I've set up six stations on the green. And again, I'm gonna be using three balls per station. Now, the six stations, they're split into two groups, short, mid, and long. Now, the whole point of this is on the two short puts, which are a club length and two club lengths away from the hole, I need to be holding all three of my putts from each station. If I hold three putts on the first station, which I always should do really from that distance, I need to then hold three putts on the next station as well. If I only hold two of those, then I go back to the first station and start again. Once I've completed the two stations, so I've hold six putts, those tee pegs come out the ground and I move on to the next two stations. Now these next two stations, I need to be holding two out of the three putts on each station. Again, if I miss one, that's fine. But if I miss two, then I've got to start again. And then once I've completed those first two stations on the last two stations, then I've only got to be holding one out of the three putts per station. But I have to complete the game. I have to complete everything before I move on. And what this does, it gives me a good rounding as far as the early putts, talking about technique, working on that, getting about the ball starting online, judging break, judging pace, all these things, and then at the end, adding in that real pressure element, they all mean that this is a very well-rounded practice session and can help improve a lot of facets of your putting. So guys, please comment below. Let me know what you think. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and please give these a go. Yes, individually, but try and condense them into that one perfect practice session. It will improve how you approach your putting. So guys, thank you so much for watching. We'd love to know your feedback. Please comment below. We'll see you down here next time.